see you guys over back there. Be quiet. Alright, let's pray. Alright, thank you Lord. Thank you for gathering us all here. Thank you that we have a multitude of witnesses here where people can uh, testify um, their uh, public acknowledgement of being saved and identifying with you, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just pray you bless our time here, Lord. May you keep the mosquitoes away, keep us warm. And I pray, Lord, that you just uh, bless our time here, help people to pay attention, to listen. Um, and Lord, I pray that everything that is said and done here will be pleasing to you. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Alright, so um, like I said, I, I didn't know how all of you guys were coming, otherwise I would have prepared some song sheets <laughs> so you could sing along with us. But, but thanks for coming. Um, the way today is going to work, we're just going to have a bit of preaching. I'll just say a few things about baptism. We'll sing another song and then we'll go into the water. We'll baptize them. Feel free to stick around as well if you want. Obviously, the kids can play with the water. We're going to have a bit of pizza ordered. So if you want to stick around for a slice, you're more than welcome to. If uh, you don't know that uh, block over there, that white block, that's the, that's the toilets over there. So for those of you getting baptized or having a swim, um, that's where you can get changed. And if you need to go, obviously, there's the toilets over there. I don't know whether there's toilet paper. If you need some toilet paper, it's not really so Alright, so um, I just want to say a few things about baptism. We, get, we have six people um, getting baptized today. Uh, we've got six people getting baptized today, so you won't know them, but we've got uh, Daniela, uh, Giordano, uh, Anna, uh, G uh, Gino, and Andula, and Neil uh, getting yeah. baptized, so that's great. Uh, yeah, we met Neil out door knocking, if you didn't know. We just knocked on his house one day, started coming to our church, and uh, we got into a conversation about baptism, realized he wasn't baptized yet, because he went to a Presbyterian church and just sprinkled babies, so um, they, they don't uh, baptize uh, as the Bible has said us, told us to do. So I just want to say a couple of things about baptism. Um, just four things I want to talk about, uh, just so that we can learn a bit about baptism as we baptize today. And then, um, like I said, we'll have another song and then we'll go into the water. So first point I want to make, I just want to say four things. The first thing is that water baptism, now obviously there's the baptism of the Holy Ghost too. I'm not talking about that today. The water baptism is what represent, is representative of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But the first thing I want to say is that water baptism does not save us. It does, has no power to wash away sins. Um, you know, the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, there are other churches that do believe that the water in baptism is representative of washing away sin, which is not true. That's not what the water represents. And we'll get into that in a moment. But first and foremost is baptism does not save. This is why there is no need to baptize children because it doesn't save them, right? They need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Even as an adult, it doesn't wash away your sin. It's not something you have to do before you die. No, it's just a step of obedience. Uh, in obedience, you try to identify publicly with him in the death, burial, and resurrection. So salvation is by faith alone in Jesus Christ. Right? A lot of churches, unfortunately, today, they, you know, work salvation is creeping in. The Catholic Church has pushed work salvation for many a hundreds of years, teaching that you have to get baptized, join the church, try and live a good life to be saved. No, no, the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The most famous verse in the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's not whosoever is good enough, it's not whosoever tries to keep all the commandments. It's not whosoever tries to repent of all their sins. Uh, it's not whosoever tries to give their life to Jesus and commit their life to Jesus. These are a lot of the phrases that you hear said in churches. But these are all good works that we should do. You know, should we repent of our sins? Of course. You know, should we try and keep the commandments? Of course. Should we try and give our life to Jesus? Yes. But do we do that to be saved? No. Salvation is a free gift. It's not of works lest any man should boast. So there are things that we do as believers. And then there are things that we do in order to become a believer, right? So we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. We're saved, we have everlasting life. And then as a believer, we have a duty and a responsibility to do good works. But even if we don't do good works, we're still saved because salvation is by grace. Um, so in 1 Peter 3, it says here, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, um, and if you have your Bible with you, you can turn it all. 1 Peter 3. Uh, for Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, 
being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So we see the context here in 1 Peter 3 is the death and resurrection. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. So that's when Jesus' soul descended into hell to pay for our sins for three days and three nights. He was preaching the word of God there. Uh, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. So a lot of people use this passage to say, well, we're saved by baptism. We have to keep reading. 1 Peter 3 21. The like figure, so in the same uh, figure or likeness as Noah in the flood and being protected by God's wrath in that flood, says the like figure, whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, so you see, so we're not getting baptized in order to get saved and get away our sins, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. So you see, baptism is a response in getting saved. Once we believe on Jesus, we have identified with his death, burial, and resurrection, then we get baptized, and that signifies you know, the death, burial, and resurrection as we go under the water. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you see, we're saved by the resurrection. And that's why when we go under the water, what does the water represent? The water represents the wrath of God, right? Just like the water in Noah's day represented the wrath of God and Noah's ark saved them from that wrath. They went into the flood, they came out of the flood. Just like the death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus descended into the wrath of God to pay for our sins. He rose again from the dead. And that's what baptism represents, right? Baptism in the water, which we are buried with him by baptism into death and we are raised in the likeness of his resurrection. So. My first point is, baptism, what a baptism doesn't say, it doesn't wash away sins. Uh, what it does, number two, what it represents is the death, burial, and resurrection. Just read from Mark chapter 1 verse 6, where we see here the connection between being baptized by the Holy Ghost, which what happens when we get saved, and being baptized with water. It says, John was clothed with camel's hair, and with a girdle of a skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, there cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I, John the Baptist talking here, I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. So you see that link there where John was sent to baptize with water because there was a real spiritual baptism happening when we get saved, right? When we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now what happens when we're baptized into the Holy Ghost? Or well, Romans 6.3, talks about it here it says know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into jesus christ so we're baptized into the body of christ we're baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father so we also should walk in newness of life for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this that our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin so you see there what baptism represents we are identifying with the death of jesus the burial and then rising again from the dead and when we are baptized with the holy ghost we are baptized into the body of jesus christ and become part of the body of christ so that's my second point that's what baptism represents the death burial and resurrection the first point was baptism does not save it does not wash away sin now number three is baptism is only for believers so a couple of reasons why people like to baptize their children they think it either washes away sin um, or they, they're just following a tradition of a church right they either follow the orthodox tradition or the catholic tradition but what does the bible say because in acts 8 there was somebody that actually wanted to be baptized so if you, if you remember the story in acts 8 uh, philip is going along preaching he comes along with eunuch is reading from Isaiah 53 and then he preaches unto him the word of God he preaches unto him Jesus the eunuch believes and now they're going on their way we read from Acts 8 36 and it says that as they went on their way they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what doth hinder me to be baptized so he's asking here's water I'm saved what's stopping me from getting baptized uh, Acts 8 37 Philip said if thou believest with all thine heart thou mayest and he answered and said I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and he commanded the chariot to stand still they went down both into the water both Philip and the eunuch 
and he baptized him. So this is where we get the practice from. Why, why is it a believer's baptism? That's what we believe. It's because, number one, it's representative of, of being saved, right? And dying and rising with Jesus Christ spiritually. So it wouldn't make sense if somebody isn't saved to, to take part in that, um, that, that symbolism. Um, but also, there's a clear scripture here in Acts 8.36 when, when Philip was out preaching and baptizing people, that the Ethiopian eunuch asked him, saying, Hey, what's stopping me from getting baptized? And what was his answer? Well, if you believe, you can get baptized. That's why it's a believer's baptism. So we don't baptize babies because it represents a death, burial, and resurrection. This is why we don't sprinkle. Right? So the, the whole idea of sprinkling comes from the Old Testament where they would sprinkle the blood. But remember, that's not what baptism represents. Baptism represents the death, burial, and resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know, going into the wrath of God, coming out of the wrath of God. And that's why we go under the water um, and come out of the water. That's why we do it by uh, immersion. Now, the last thing I want to mention is um, number four. So if number one is baptism doesn't save. No, only Jesus Christ says. Number two is it represents the death, burial, and resurrection. Number three is it's for believers only. And the last one is that baptism is performed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, obviously, there is a difference of opinion out there because a lot of people baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Our church believes, well, I personally believe, that we baptize in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it shouldn't really come as a surprise to us. We read in Colossians 3.17, it says here, And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed so that sounds like it covers everything right whether we do some, whether we say something or whether we do something it says do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god and the father by him now the apostles understood this they understood that the name of the lord jesus christ has the authority of the godhead and i'll explain in a, in a moment but in acts 2 right after the day of pentecost when they were praying in that upper room and the cloven tongues of fire came upon them and then you know 120 of the early disciples went out preaching the gospel on the day of pentecost with all the people coming to the city that day peter stands up and addresses a crowd of jews and what does he say here in acts 2 37 he says he says now when they heard this they were pricked in their heart and said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So even on the day of Pentecost, Peter is there saying, Hey, we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Why? Because they were already saved, right? Because their sins have been remitted, they need to get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I haven't read the whole chapter, obviously, but if you read up further, that's where we read, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So they're doing it in response to that call. Now, I just wanted to mention this, and this is on my last point as well. Obviously in Matthew 28, because people will think, well, if we're baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, why in Matthew 28 does it say, well, you, you have to baptize, Jesus is saying, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's because a lot of people don't read all the verses surrounding Matthew 28. Because if we read from verse 18, it says in Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now that's a key phrase, right? Because when we get to Acts 2, and we have the Apostle Peter filled with the Holy Ghost, preaching at the day of Pentecost, saying, Hey, everyone should repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Was he wrong? Right? Did he get it wrong? Did he, did he misunderstand what Jesus said when just before Jesus rose and went up to heaven? Did he misunderstand what Jesus was saying? Did he ignore the prompting of the Holy Ghost? He was filled with the Holy Ghost, but at that time, he didn't say the right words. No, no, no. The key here is, in Matthew 28, Jesus says, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, when the Bible says, in the name of, it's not being baptized by a certain name. Yes, it is because that name has that authority. But when you see the phrase in the Bible, in the name of, what it means is by what authority do you do this act? This is why when we meet for church, whatsoever you do in word or in deed, we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ gives us the authority to me it gives us the authority to do what we do to go out and preach the gospel to, to have that influence on society right we get all our power and authority through the lord jesus christ now in acts 4 7 
It's interesting, we see this parallel. It says here, when they had set them in the midst, this is when they were questioning the apostles in Acts 4. It says, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? And if you're familiar with Acts 4, obviously they go on to say, hey, this man was made whole by the power of the uh, name of the Lord Jesus Christ and whatnot. But I just wanted to show you there that parallel, that it's all linked up. Why did Peter clearly say on the day of Pentecost, baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus yeah. well it's because he understood what Jesus said when he rose from the, when he rose up to heaven he ascended into heaven where Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore therefore what what he just said that he has all power in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So I just wanted to mention those things here today, because I personally believe that it's right for us to uh, acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ when we baptize, we baptize in His name. Uh, and some people don't understand why, because they think, uh, obviously, Matthew 20 is a very clear passage. But like I said, um, Peter understood what Jesus was saying. Even when you read Matthew 28, it says that he has all power. Uh, I didn't want to go too much into it today, but if you guys are interested, I'll be preaching more on that uh, tomorrow night at church and just talking a bit more about that topic. So, those are just the four things I wanted to mention, get us all on the same page. Number one, we remember, baptism does not save. Water baptism does not wash away sin. The only thing that saves us is believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a lot of works lest any man should boast. Number two is it represents the death burial and resurrection. Right? This is why we, we do baptism by immersion. This is why we do not sprinkle. This is why we, we do not baptize children, because it's a believer's only baptism. That's number three. Believers only. This is why we don't baptize children that do not believe. And number four, we do all things in the name of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I hope you learned something there.